Hello folks, um, today I'm going to show you a game that I just played um, a couple of hours ago against a fellow streamer called uh, Justice Bot and I feel a little bit guilty about putting it up right after we played it but um, <clears throat> the quality of the games were quite alright and um, I managed to play a very good attacking game that I wanted to share with you uh, part, uh, particularly because it was played in an opening that is very very um, fashionable these days is the word that I was after um, and this is the Queen's Gambit uh, um, well, what am I talking about? It's a uh, Queen's Indian defense and uh, here we have this Queen C2 more which uh, has become very fashionable around um, yeah five years ago or so uh, <coughs> and ever since uh, it has been in the center of uh, theoretical debates and although I think that Black has got uh, a number of ways to equalize it is a really, really fun line to play because uh, white gets a lot of uh, play for the sacrifice pawn, uh, which comes about right here when we play d5. So the idea is that after e takes, pawn takes, knight takes, the knight on d5 is a little bit awkwardly placed. It's uh, in possible pin. Also, it blocks the d pawn, which is likely to be uh, a backward pawn, and so on. So white has got quite a bit of pull for uh, uh, the pawn. Rook d1, all logical moves, and probably best in this position is just to drop the knight back to f6. Uh, in my opinion, the sooner you get the knight out of this uh, pin and the way of the d pawn, the better. Uh, my opponent played queen c8. The idea behind this move is to remove the queen from this potential d file pin and at the same time guard the bishop against this pin. So it makes a lot of sense, but the queen on c8 looks very awkward and pa passive. So yeah, it has got ups and downs, really. I ended up playing a3. It's a move that is designed to uh, decline or deny knight b4. Excuse me. I'm not sure if this is actually the more accurate. Um, probably not. But uh, I'm going to learn about it very soon because um, not long ago I actually purchased this book, which is The Cutting Edge. Uh, Gambit against the Queen's Indian, uh, written by Imre Hera, who is a Hungarian uh, grandmaster, and that book is all about this very, very fun line. Highly recommend it to anybody who is interested in it. Right, so I played a3, and uh, I don't remember what he did. Yes, I do. He played knight f6, um, I played knight c3, and I, uh, he played d5. Probably in this case castling would have been a tad bit safer, but then after e4 I have got the main idea that is to uh, maintain this pawn as backward pawn threatening e5 and I have got uh, a bit of pressure here and there on the white squares, but all in all it's definitely survivable for black. d5 looks like the more logical move because it uh, puts the pawn in the center, connects the two central pawns and it seems like black is doing perfectly okay. In fact, uh, probably even better uh, because of the extra pawn. But this is actually an illusion. The reality is that after ninety five, the better developed white pieces can put a lot of pressure in the, on this center, in particular the d five pawn. And the fact that the king is still in the middle plays a crucially important role here. Right now, perhaps best is um, castling, simply giving back uh, the material and then uh, just go from here and try to equalize all the white's prospects are certainly better here uh, but my opponent played uh, the more consistent although bad d4 um, and now the problem is that after queen a4 check black is in very 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 serious trouble the main reason is because after knight d7 uh, he will be in a very awkward pin and uh, I will gain access uh, to the d5 square and king f8 which although ugly would look very very logical because now d4 is hanging and if bishop takes queen can retake and the knight still has no good square but this move actually loses immediately to a very spectacular queen c4 and the mate threat can't be paired without severe uh, material losses this is a very nice motif and one that uh, we should remember because it might recur in our games so for this reason he had to play knight d7, he chose to drop back this knight, perhaps the other one would have been a little bit more accurate, because this way I uh, can avoid even swapping this knight off. 
and I can just go into d5 right away. So now these two knights are dominating the whole entire board with the aid of the bishop from g2. Um, he can't castle because this is hanging and uh, if he can't castle that's pretty much the end of the story because uh, my forces are just uh, creating more and more uh, threats. e3 is uh, the ultimate way to break the position up and then eventually open up the d file. Um, I was thinking about what he really should have and could have done here. Not a lot, really. He played bishop d6. I was thinking about perhaps bishop d8. And after knight c4 coming around here. But then I realized that that loses to this tactical trick here and then knight d6 check. So probably there is not much he can do already at this point. Once again he played here and after knight c4 he dropped back. But again white pieces are just developing so beautifully every single one of them with the tempo on a 97 check is threatened so we played knight a6 and um, the sad end of this story was that now I got to play queen c2 with the threat of uh, playing a check here I really don't remember what he did here what did you do here Dude, oh, I think he played bishop c6, that's right, yep. So I went check, king here, um, knight d6. It's really just the finish off because uh, black is hopelessly lost. Now mate is threatened already, he had to take, bishop takes, mate is threatened already. And rook e8 is not guarding it because bishop e7 take takes is still mate. So instead he chose to play queen b7 but now it just lost to queen check here and then queen takes f7 um, and it's a very awkward moment for black again because after queen takes f7 I'm guarding d5 and at the same time I'm threatening with knight e7 check which is pretty much unstoppable he played knight f6 and after knight f7 check he sacrificed the queen away and resigned in a few more moves so yeah that's how Things can go really, really wrong very fast in this line for black. Um, I would like to go back just to the beginning once again to see this motif when he played d5. After knight e5, black really, really has to be careful, and I wouldn't be surprised if d4 would turn out to be a decisive mistake already. And um, yeah, after queen a4 check, knight d. Okay, so here. He played knight here, I reckon this one would have been better. And after knight takes, knight takes, knight d5, at least I only have one central knight instead of two killing him. But even here, my prospects are a lot better with the upcoming e3, he still can't castle. So yeah, things are looking uh, not that great uh, for black. But uh, yeah, after the other knight to d7, which was the game continuation, knight d5, there was no salvation here. Uh, White's attack is just too ferocious and uh, it's uh, impossible to fend off. So that was the game, guys. I hope you liked it. And once again, uh, as I said, there is that book that I was uh, referring to by Imre Hera. Hungarian Grandmaster, uh, and that book has got some really, really sweet games too, so if you are interested in uh, uh, this line more in depth, then I highly recommend you to have a look at that book too. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will be back with more soon. Thank you!